And with me, number 320, we'll sing all four verses. For silver, for gold. This kind of ties into what Pastor was talking about this morning about the blood of Christ. So, number 320, then let's stand. <laughs> Sunday morning, and then we're going to have Sunday night pride after that, okay? 
And uh, so, uh, so that'll be a fun day. And to tell people, say, look, I, I really want to show people how much I love my church. And I do love my church. And I would love for you to come and be a part of I Love My Church Sunday. All right? And uh, so if you know somebody that, that, uh, that you can invite and just tell them about it, um, you know, I, I, can, uh, uh, I can just see how that could be a good open door for you. So um, anyway, that's just something that we're going to have. And uh, if you love your church, make sure you're there, okay? So we'll have a word of prayer, all right? Lord, we just thank you for this time we can be together. And we just ask that you would just bless as we, uh, as we continue our service today, Lord. We thank you for the good singing and the, just the words, Lord. Uh, Lord, it's, uh, Lord, I am thankful that you died for a wretch like me. And uh, Lord, I ask that, Lord, personally, I ask that you forgive me uh, for thinking myself to be something better than mm -hmm. some of the wicked people that you died for in this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Lord, we just ask that you'd help us, Lord, to realize that the blood has atoned for all sin. But Lord, we pray that you would uh, just help us to make sure that we tell others about what you have done. And Lord, we just thank you for everything you're going to do. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, just by way of encouragement, uh, you ever look at somebody and say, that person will never get saved? Yeah. There was a guy at work that, Diane knows of Joe Brady. I thought if ever there was a guy that wouldn't get saved, that guy wouldn't be the, that guy would be the guy that wouldn't get saved. You know what he did? He got saved. <laughs> and that's all. And, you know, that, that has always been a challenge for an encouragement to me because, uh, just when you think that there's no hope for that guy. Yeah, and yeah. Isn't that something? And the Lord works in his heart. It's humbling. Yeah, you pray for him, and you think, we were talking about weight, Jonathan's uh, Sunday school class about weight, which pastor wrote it up. And, you know, it was one of those weight things, but my lack of faith, yeah. you know, I thought, ah, he's not going to get saved, but he did. That's right. Amen. And, uh, so he's going on his way to serve the Lord. All right, 239, God will take care of you. Now, I know everybody knows this one, right? 239? 239? Do you know it? Does anybody not know it? Okay. 239, sing all four verses of 239. Can you hear me?
boy, just when you thought you'd seen all the names, I saw the name of the one who wrote that song, Sevilla. I've never heard a name like that before, but anyway. All right, that's a good song. God will take care of you. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering. So if I could have our, our guys come up and, and uh, we'll do that. Okay, so you be sure to give it a heart of thanksgiving. The Lord will bless you for that. So, um, Judson, why don't you lead us in prayer tonight? Dear Jesus, uh, thank you for this day, Lord. Um, I pray that you would um, bless each gift and giver, Lord. Um, I pray that you would help this money to be used for the glorifying of you. Mm -hmm. In your name, amen. Amen. <laughs> So that's a that's really been a it's been it's been good. I, I've enjoyed this study of Joseph. Um, but look, we're gonna look at Genesis 43. Don't worry, when we get when we start getting to Exodus, we're gonna be gleaning Exodus. All right. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't be like 60 years old. I, I won't be 60 years old uh, by the time I'm done. So <laughs> anyway. All right, uh, it's been a boy. I can't believe how long we've been in Genesis. But anyway, all right. So Genesis forty-three and verse twenty-five. Let's uh, let's let's look there. Okay. All right. Uh, and they made ready the uh, the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought the, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man whom he spake, is he yet alive? And they answered, Let me make sure that I'm actually in, Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom he spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. Uh -oh. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I feel like I am. I feel like I'm in the wrong text, but but I think we're 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 doing all right. Okay, so. Um, so verse 31, and, and he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, set on bread. And they set on, him, set, up, set on for him by themselves and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews for that is an abomination to the, under the Egyptians. Goodness, I am just in the wrong place. I know that I am. Okay. You're going to have to forgive me, y'all. I'm so sorry. Oh. Um. Ha. <laughs> okay, I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm like, I'm running out of verses. I'm so sorry. Oh, goodness. That's embarrassing. You know, I, 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 did, I, I wish Josh was here. See, Josh, I did the same thing. He, he was talking about that. Okay. All right, we got to start over again. I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> we got to start our text reading again. <laughs> okay. All right, so verse 25. All right, then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way, and thus did he unto them. Okay, so they're, they've been in Egypt and they're getting ready to go back. Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry, Genesis 42. I'm so sorry, Marianne. Okay, yeah, I'm so sorry. And they laded their asses with the corn and departed thence. It's amazing what one little number will do, but anyway... Um, so verse 27, and as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. 
And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Canaan, and, so, and told him all that befell them, saying, The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone, and bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And, then, and when both they and their fathers saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children? Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away? All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons of such a noble thing. What a horrible thing to say. Isn't that terrible? Slay my two sons if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand. Sounds like he's trying to butter his father up, you know, because he's kind of, kind of got in trouble, lost his birthright. But, uh, but anyway, so he's, so he's here saying, Slay my two sons if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And his, of course, his dad dismisses it. And he said, verse 38, and he said, My son shall not go with you, no, go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief, if mischief befall him by the way in which, we, which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Oh, wow. So, uh, uh, last week we looked at claiming what God has given to us. Joseph had a dream that all 11 of his brothers were to bow down before him. Only 10 had come, and therefore uh, Benjamin had to be there in order for God's dream to become a reality for, uh, for, for Joseph. So he, he began to set things into motion, if you remember. Um, God has given us promises, facts in the Bible that we can access. Um, so we finished where Joseph imprisoned Simeon, and I believe it's because he heard Reuben speaking to uh, his brothers, though, though they didn't know that he could speak their language, all right? Uh, I don't, you know, I love, I love languages, and uh, I'll never forget, we were out soul winning, and, and there was this, uh, we came to this door, and there was a German flag on it. I said, oh, look, this guy might be German. And we knock on the door, he comes out, and he, he goes, yeah? And, uh, and I, I said, hey, my name's Mike Barnett, we're with New Grace Baptist Church, and, uh, you know, we, we're just out inviting people to church, you go to church anywhere? And he goes... Uh, he can he can speak in English. He's kind kind of English, kind of English. I said, Ah, du sprichst Deutsch. He speaks Deutsch auch. <laughs> and he goes, He goes. What do you know about that? <laughs> he says it in English. He goes, What do you know about that? A Tarboro man who could speak German. <laughs> so he just kind of he just kind of like deflates, you know. So. You know, it's, you know, you got to be careful about what you say around people because they might understand you. But, uh, but anyway, today we're going to focus briefly on Jacob. All right, so that's we're going to kind of take a little break from Joseph. We're going to look at Joseph at the same time, but but we're going to uh, focus briefly on Jacob. Um, understand that a man can either be self-centered or he can be God-centered. He can't be both. All right, if he's self-centered, he's going to blame everyone and everything for whatever happens to him. I mean, that's, that's really what happens with a self-centered person. Uh, if you pay attention to somebody who's self-centered, it's always somebody else's fault. It's always the situation that, that you know, well, if God, would, if God allowed this, to, if God wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have had this situation. Or why would God let this happen to me? And, you know, what, what's the matter with you? How come you can't keep up? You know, just, you know, these people who are self-centered, they're just, everything is wrong with everybody else. But they're Mr. and Mrs. Perfect, all right? You've met them all. They're like that. Um, whatever good happens, he chalks that up to what he deserved in the first place. Well, that was supposed to happen, you know. At least something good took place in my life because I deserve the good. I don't deserve the bad. But still, this kind of man will always compare 
and never be satisfied with what God allows in his life. He's always looking at others. Well, why can't I have such a good, you know, good life, good house, good car, good job? Why can't, you know, how come I didn't get promoted? You know, as if he deserved it. And he really believes he did. But that's a self-centered person. Um, uh, understand that happiness is a choice. I mean, uh, I've got a little sign that uh, I love it that my wife put it in there because uh, I, you know, m you know, my my old my old nickname. Thank goodness it's my old nickname. It's not my. It's I actually am, I, I I've been able to battle out of this, and God has helped me. And uh, now if I, if, if if I stop abiding, I go back to this character. But my my nickname used to be Eeyore. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for noticing. You know, that's that's kind of that was my that was my attitude. You know, and uh, you know, like I would send Marianne little emojis of Eeyore. You know, thanks for noticing. You know, I was just I just was always I was just I always had a cloud on, over me. You know, I'm just always Mr. Eeyore, and and uh, I, I I I just you know the, I've got this um I, I've got this little sign that says happiness is what you make it. Always has been, always will be. I think my wife put it in there on purpose. <laughs> uh, she, you know, she likes to decorate for our visitors and stuff, but she knows I'm in there. And she put that thing in there, and I, 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 you, you notice I have it memorized. I mean, that's, that's because I've looked at it. I look at it every morning, and I go, that's, that's, that's the answer right here. Happiness is what we make it. Always has been, always will be. And I know that's not very theological, but the fact is, is there's a choice involved. We choose to be happy. Sadness is also a choice. And that's kind of hard to, that's hard to believe. No, look, I'm, you're, you're talking to a man who's struggled with depression, all right? So I'm, I'm not trying to be hard on people who have struggled with depression, but, but, but I, you're looking at one who has. But sad things are going to happen in life, but we can make the decision not to dwell on those events, yeah. all right? We're going to have hard days. We're going to have days when it's raining. There's always going to be rainy days. And we can either choose to dwell on it or we can just move on. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of people, there's, there's my, my saying, here's the thing. You need to make me a shirt that says, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but, uh, but, but you, you, you move on or you stay where you're at, okay? But when you do that, if you choose to move on, you've just made a deposit into the positive bank. So that when bad days come in the future, you can, take, you can take out, you can withdraw from the positive and enjoy whatever good is in the bad, all right? Now, if you continue to make deposits in the negative bank, suddenly you're going to find your place in a state of depression that you can't get out of. Um, uh, I want you to see Jacob's attitude, all right? Look at verse 35 uh, in, our, in our text. Verse 35 and um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, verse 35. And um, uh, am I okay? Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. And it, and, it, and it came to pass as they emptied their sacks that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and when both they and their father saw the bundles of money. They were afraid. Okay, now, notice what he says. And Jacob, their father, said, uh, he, he said unto them, me. This is the first thing that comes out of his mouth. Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. <laughs> That verse is sandwiched, right? Look at the look at the, the me sandwich. You've got it starts with me and it ends with me. That's a sentence. Me, me, and this is a far cry from the Jacob uh, uh, that uh, that we knew at Bethel. You remember Bethel when uh, he was attended by angels. He saw them ascending and descending the ladder. It's a far cry from that Jacob, and he's different from the Jacob who returned to Bethel. You remember that guy? Um, if you're in the habit of marking your Bible, you should underline the me uh, in verse 36, also my, and then me again in that same verse. You should underline those because you'll see he's very self-centered. It's all about me. What about me? You know, 
<laughs> the thing I, you know, I love I, the thing I love about watching kids. You know, you can tell kids are born with a sin nature because they, they if if they see one kid getting something, they come up to me and they go, "What about me?" All right, that's just that's just how we all are. We're all like that. How come I didn't get chosen? Yeah. You know, we get our feelings hurt, but we're self-centered. Um, but what caused this man to become so self-centered? All this bad has come to me. Notice what he says at the end of the chapter. All right, Genesis 42, 38. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. Wow. Can you imagine being the other brothers? Yeah. Uh, as if Benjamin didn't have any other brothers. He's left alone. He's the only child I have left. Goodness gracious. So let's continue. If mischief befall him by the way in which he sh in, in, in the which he go, now notice what he says. Then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. You'll do it. All right, that's what he's that he's saying. You will bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Depression is no easy thing to get out of. Okay, if you struggle with depression, it's not it's not an easy thing to escape. And as I said, I've struggled with it myself, so I know um, there's different types of depression. There's some depression that comes because of, uh, of, of ailments, pain, uh, people who go through uh, physical, uh, uh, physical struggles and as a result end up in depression. Um, but, uh, but then there's others who, and, and I, you know, I, I'm, I think that there are times when, you, when, when there are chemical situations where, where medicine comes into play and is required because we have a body and sometimes the things that are in our body are broken. And I think that sometimes there's medicine that's required for those things, just like we need heart medicine, just like we need uh, medicine, you know, to, to get rid of things that are, that, that are not functioning right in the rest of our body. We need medicine for a brain that might have parts that are broken to it. I understand that, all right? It's no easy thing. But sometimes depression is self-inflicted, yeah. all right? Sometimes it's self-inflicted. And I, this is not to point out anybody or to accuse anybody. You know your own heart, and you may be able to find a cure, um, but I, I, just, I, I just have to tell you, depression is the result of unwise choices from years past for a lot of people. Uh, mental decisions that are made. Understand that Joseph has been gone for nearly 30 years now. That's a long time. 30 years. I want you to look back at Genesis 37, okay? 30 years ago. Harrison kind of helped me to, to, to realize that it's been 30 years. You know, I, I've, I've always been looking at 13 years as far as some of the things that Joseph himself had been through as far as struggles. But it actually has been a lapse of about 30 years. But, uh, but Genesis 37, um, and uh, let's, look at, let's look at verse 35 here. It says, And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. All right, this is Jacob. This is after he found out that Joseph was dead. All right, now notice. They rose up to comfort him, uh, but he refused to be comforted. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? All right, he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Am I saying that it's wrong to mourn? I am not saying it's wrong to mourn, all right? Uh, I'll never forget the night that Jonathan and Alicia came to the door and, and told us that, that Marianne's brother had passed away. That was, that was horrible, and we mourned. We mourned over that. That was, that was a grievous situation. It was hard. I'm not saying that it's wrong to mourn. I'm not saying that, jo that Jacob was wrong for mourning Joseph. Um, but is it wrong to decide you're going to mourn until you die? Yeah. There's something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Jacob decided for himself, I'm going to die mourning. He decided he was going to do that. It was a decision. We see here that happiness or sadness is a choice in a lot of cases. Um, so happiness is a decision you make, and Jacob decided against it. They tried to comfort him. They, they tried to help him get through it. You know, I, I, think, I think some of it had to do with Jacob. I think that Jacob 
I think in a way Jacob suspected that maybe his brothers did something and maybe he maybe if he maybe if he said I'm going to I'm going to mourn to the grave that maybe maybe their brothers would uh, would maybe his brothers would say okay all right dad I can't stand this we did it I don't know maybe he did it like I don't know but he 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 kept his word he mourned all these years um but he, did, he decided against being happy, and it reflected on the things he said to those closest to him and in his faith in God. I mean, everything that God was doing, do you realize? I mean, God was perfectly orchestrating everything, and Jacob only sees the negative. And a lot of times we see negative things in what God's doing, and we overlook it. We miss it. Um, they should have had a prayer meeting when the boys got back. Dad, look... Uh, they kept Simeon, and they want Benjamin, and our money's in our sacks, and I have no idea what's going on. And Jacob should have said, guys, we need to go back to Bethel. That's what Jacob should have said. He said, you know, I've messed up, guys. I've been mourning all these years, and we need to have a prayer meeting. God's still on the throne. That should have been his attitude. His attitude should have been, guys, let's seek God. Let's find out what he's doing. But that didn't happen. Dad should have initiated it. There, there, there's a lot more in this chapter, but I'm trying to get through this book by the five-year mark. Okay? There's a whole lot of things that, that we can find here, and we'll probably, we'll, we may revisit this in the future. But, but I, I, the, the whole point that I want us to see here is that happiness or sadness is a choice in a lot of cases. So let's look over at uh, chapter 43 again, okay? Or, or now we're looking at 43. We're, now we're in 43. Um, all right, so, so we're moving forward here. And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn that, uh, which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto, unto them, go again and buy us a little food. All right, so things have kind of died down a little bit. <laughs> and it's almost as if he's forgotten all about Simeon here, you know. Um, verse 3, you know, he's, you know, his stomach's ground. He's like, go, go, we, we need some more food. Verse 3, and, and Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. Hey, Dad, look, Simeon's still there. <laughs> they just kind of just left him there, you know. And they, they weren't able to go back because Dad's not going to let Benjamin go back. And if he does, if, if, if they come back without Benjamin, in their minds... They're, they're going to be marked down as spies and possibly be killed. And so Judah steps up and he says, Hey, Dad, it's time to wake up to reality. I love it when my boys do that. I'm like, I'm supposed to be the smart one here. I'm supposed to be the guy that's got it all together. My kids, they end up pulling, making me pull things together sometimes. I'm thankful for kids sometimes. I'll tell you, that all the time, of course. But anyway, sorry, guys. I shouldn't have said it like that. All right. But, but let's, let's, look at what it, let, let's look at what it says in verse 4. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? <laughs> Does that sound like something that's gone on in your home? It, it sounds a little, you know, Why would you say something like that? I can just see my, I can see my boys going, you know, what you, Dad, that's not fair. You know, I mean, what, what do you think here? All right, look, look what it's saying. Verse 7, and, and they said, The man asked us straightly for our state and, for, and, and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of these words. Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? I mean, come on, Dad. That's basically what's going on. In verse 8, it says, And Judah said unto, his, unto Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou, and also our little ones. He's saying, hey, Dad, you remember, what, remember you said that back in, you know, before when we went to go get food? He said, you, you reminded us that we've got kids and all this stuff, and the cupboards are bare. Hey, we're hungry. Let's take care of the nation that God's giving us. Let's remember this, okay, Dad? Verse 9, I will be, I, I will be surety for him. That means if, if something happens to Benjamin, I'm gonna give, I, I'll, I'll give myself. Judah has had a change of heart, hasn't he? 
Judah was the he was one of the guys who wanted to kill him. But now look, he says if something happens to Benjamin. I'll, I'll, I'll you, you can you can take my life. You know, I mean, he he became surety for his brother. That's a big deal. So we can see that God's doing a work in Judah. Where does Jesus come from? Judah. He comes from the, he comes from the tribe of Judah. Isn't that something? And that's, you know what? That's a wonderful picture of what Jesus was. He was our surety. We learned about that this morning. But anyway, so he goes on and, uh, and he said, look, he said, I will bear the blame forever. Verse 10, for except we had lingered, surely now we had returned the second time. He said, we, we could have been back by now. You ever, you ever said that to your, you know, you ever had that kind of a conversation in your family? We could have been back by now. We're sitting here complaining and arguing. We could have been back by now. That's basically what Judah is saying. All right, now look at verse 11, all right? Oh, and their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land and your, and your vessels and carry down the man of present a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money into your hand. And the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand. Peradventure was an oversight. Maybe, maybe he just overlooked it. Verse 13, take also your brother and arise. <sighs> Go again unto this man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your brother, your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children... I am bereaved. All right, now, can I just say after all of this so far, if you're not careful and like Jacob, you continue looking at all the negatives of life, you're going to miss the true reason of God's purpose in your life. All of the negative things that God allows into our lives, a lot of times he's working it out together for good. We learned about waiting in Sunday school. There are things that, there are times where God makes us wait. And the waiting period a lot of times can be long. Lisa, what was the quote that you sent to me that one time about waiting? You said something. The, the waiting season is not a wasted season. Yes, I love that. I love that quote. Mary Ann made a little picture of it. The, the waiting season is not a wasted season. See, that's a good, that is a choice to be happy during the waiting season. Thank you. Please, I appreciate that. All right, so uh, you're, you're going to miss the true reason of God's purpose. You're going to miss out on so many blessings because you refuse to see anything that God was doing and therefore you refuse to grow. That's, that's what I think Jonathan meant when he was talking in Sunday school about preparing. You know, rather than sulking and saying, I don't know why God's not doing anything. Thing. You know, instead we're preparing for what God is going to do because we know He's not forsaken us. He said, "I'll never leave you nor forsake us." Or, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So we we got to start preparing. Yeah. It's the building up season. So um, you know, but but like Jacob, you'll you'll say at the end of your life, "Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been." Jacob said that at the end of his life. Do we really want to say that? I, I love it. My, my wife, she, she told me, she said, Mike, I wish we could go and find some of the people that left our church and say, and just, just go up to their door and say, we don't, we, we're not asking you to come back, but we just want to say, end well. That's a good thing to say to some people. Some people who, 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 have, who have chosen to carry a chip on their shoulder their whole life, end well. Don't waste your whole life in bitterness and hatred and anger end well. That's a good thing. But what a sad plight for Jacob. Don't bow to blind fate. That's what Jacob did. Instead of saying, you know what, I really believe God's in this. God was with Abraham. My it's like he forgot all about Abraham, all about Isaac. It's all about me now. So instead of looking at what God's doing with this nation, God's got to be doing something. And you know what, he, he, here, here's the attitude. This is, I mean, it's really remarkable what God can do. But he's saying God took Joseph. There's a reason for it. There's got to be. He, he, Joseph's alive <laughs> yes. right now. But at this time, he's dead to Jacob. And Jacob should have been saying there's a reason for it. God's preparing this nation somehow. Guys, let's pray. Let's seek God. Let's, let's get serious about him. But that's not his attitude he bowed to blind fate. I love it when self-righteous Christians say, I don't believe in luck. 
But then they go through life seldom seeking God's plan for their day. You know, well, you know, I, I just don't feel like I need to pray about that. You know, they just, I'll, I'll say, hey, have you considered having a prayer meeting? And you hear crickets. Can you do the cricket thing? <laughs> you know, he can, normally, he, he's a little nervous about it right now because he's in front of everybody. He can do a really good cricket sound. But, but you know, seriously though, hey, let's have a prayer meeting. And nobody says a word. It's quiet. Either that or you get this. Let's have a prayer meeting. Oh, I've heard that one before. You know, that's, you know, I hate, look, I'm ashamed to say it, but I've done that. I, I've actually rolled my eyes about having a prayer meeting. I've done it to her. She said, Mike, you know what we need to do? We need to have a prayer meeting. And I've gone like this. Oh, brother. This, that, that's not what I'm talking about. That's what God's talking about, though. See? But anyway, um, so let, let's, look at, let's look at verse 15 here. We've got to move here. Or we're, we're just about at the end of the, of the story here. But verse 15, it says, uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. And the men took the present. Let me make sure I'm on the right verse. Dude, that's the one. Yeah, okay. And the men took the present that they took, uh, and they took double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. And the man did, did as Joseph bade, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. How do you think the brothers feel? You know, they're, they're coming and they're like, I wonder what, Dave, I wonder what Joseph's going to say about this money. I wonder what Joseph's, I wonder what he's going to do. We've got Benjamin. I mean, I, I think everything's going to be okay. And they come and they got this feast prepared. I mean, I'm, if, if I was the brothers, I'd be like, what on earth is going on? Verse 18, and the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. Uh-oh, we're going to get it now. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sack at the first time are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food, and it came to pass when we came to the inn that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of the sack, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand, and our money have we brought down in our hands to buy food? We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Peace be to you. Fear not. Your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. Hey, look, by the way, here's Simeon. What on earth is going on? And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand, and into the house. And look what it says, bowed themselves to him to the earth. So he made it happen. All right, the, the, the dream is fulfilled. And, and he asked them of their welfare and said, is your father well? The old man of whom he spake, is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. There's the second one. All right, so he had, he, had, he dreamed about the stars. He dreamed about the sheaves. All right, so there it is the second time. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, his mother. So that's really, that's real touching right there. Because I'm sure he missed his mother. Uh, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom he spake unto me? It's like, man, he's gotten big. I can't believe this. And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber, and he wept there. All right, now, here at verse 30, all right, at verse 30, we're able to see the difference between Joseph and Jacob. Now we're looking at Joseph, all right? Joseph made the choice to rejoice. Hey, that's a good t-shirt. Make the choice to rejoice. All right, that's good. All right, he made the choice to rejoice that his God was with him, no matter where he was. You know, Jacob lost one guy, Joseph, and that's really sad. But Joseph lost everybody. Think about that. And here he is rejoicing 
that is, God was with him. Jacob made the choice to mourn because Joseph was gone. That was his choice. It's amazing that all of that sorrowing, all of that lack of faith, I mean, just think about this, all of that lack of faith, all that sorrow, all the pain Jacob caused for his family, it was about to be for nothing. They were about to find out that Joseph is yet alive. It really goes to show that we need to be careful. We really need to be careful about the things we complain about because things are not as bad as we choose to make them look in our own, in our own minds. God has given us the shoulders to bear the burden. He doesn't take away our burden a lot of times, but he does give us the strength to bear the burden. And also, the Bible says that he forms the mountains. And when God places a mountain in front of you and he doesn't remove it, that means he's created that mountain for you to climb. Oh, so be careful. God brings about things that will cause us to stop asking him why and to start asking yourself, why did I ever doubt? That's something to think about. The things that God has prepared for them that love him They'll render them speechless. You know, so here's, here's what I warn you. If you're a complainer, and I'm not, I'm not saying anybody here is a complainer, okay? I'm actually talking to myself here, all right? Because I tend to be a complainer. I grumble a lot. But if we're not careful and we grumble and complain through our problems, suddenly we're going to be really sad that we did it when we see what God has in store. Because God's faithful no matter what we do. And we don't want to miss out on what God has for us. So let's go ahead and we'll have a word of prayer. Just think about those things. Uh, make happiness. Choose happy. All right? That, that's what I encourage you to do. Make the choice to rejoice. All right? You can write that down. All right? Make the choice to rejoice. And just make sure that you have my name under it. No, I'm just kidding. All right. All right. I have a feeling somebody else must have come up with that quote. I love how people claim quotes. You know, they always claim quotes, but you never can figure out exactly who said it. But anyway, Lord, we just thank you for, uh, for, for the ability to laugh and just to be able to see.